Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We are back with some more bite-sized business advice, and I am both excited and nervous and confused and all of all of the emotions about today's episode. Uh, maybe one of the unique, most unique guests that we've ever had <laughs> uh, out of the growing list, and I'm excited to dive in. So let's, let's just overview what we're going to talk about. The topic that I stumbled upon was how becoming a doula made me a better mom. And I was like, okay, uh, interesting. Let's see where this goes. And then I find out, I'm talking to Bianca before we're recording here, and she's grown this lucrative business and she's got clients who are printing money because they've worked with her. And I'm like, this is the most amazing story ever. So we're going to learn how to be a better <laughs> parent. And then we're going to learn how to grow a lucrative business in a niche industry and grow it internationally. And before we go any further, Shout out to my Kiwis out there, my New Zealand fans. We love you. <laughs> There's a bunch of you in Bianca's community. Enough of the madness, Bianca. Welcome to the show, and thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, shout outs to the Kiwis as well. We've, we've got a lot over in the Babel Mia community. Your good time. <laughs> I love the Kiwis. I know the Aussies say like, oi, oi, oi. What, what do the Kiwis do? Oh, do I know? wouldn't want to do that. I would do it no justice. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to look it up and I'll we'll figure it out for future episodes. Kiwis, I'm sorry. I'm just learning your culture now, but here we go. Okay. So <laughs> Bianca, this is interesting. So the topic at hand, how becoming a doula made you a better mom. That's, I mean, that's, that's super interesting. So tell me, why did you first get into this industry becoming a doula in the first place? Oh, my origin story. I mean, we want to keep it light and fun. And my origin story is not that. Um, but I essentially, it, Cole's note so we can get to the fun part. But I had my baby many years earlier than I expected to. Um, I was a med school dropout. I was under-resourced. I was living in domestic violence. I was back in the closet. Like I had undiagnosed postpartum mood disorder. It was rough. And I knew that I needed to create some kind of income to A, get into self safe housing and B, um, I, I had been changed by my birth and I wanted to, I wanted to do something bigger than just like a job. Um, and I wanted to change the world. That's all, you know? <laughs> and so uh, yeah, I, okay. change the world. no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. And I remember just like pacing with my newborn and just thinking like, what, what am I going to do? Like, I have to get out of here. Like, what have I done with my life? Oh my goodness. And so, um, doula training came into my head because my doula had the relationship to birth that I wanted to have. Um, but like most things that, you know, my, where I got to now, where I have a global movement and students in 49 countries, it all came from problem solving. So I became a doula because I wanted to have a, a meaningful career. And then I started building a bigger community because the doula education sucked that I, that was the only thing available was like weekend training. Like you cannot learn a skill in a weekend, let alone the business part of it. So then I was like, here's my next thing to solve. And so I started rounding up people and seeing what they would want in a training. And then I started offering it in Toronto and brick and mortar. And then folks wanted it who didn't live in Toronto. So then I had to figure out how to move it online in 2012. And then, so like every single one of my successes came from, um, solving a true problem which is really what entrepreneurship should be doing i mean a lot of times we make a product that we like and then we try to sell it but if you go from the problem solving approach which i did from the micro of like how do i get out of this house and into safe housing with my daughter um all the way along until i was like how do, how do we just teach this in multiple languages so that we can serve more folks like each one of our growth moments have been from that. So, I mean, doula care wasn't specifically what I was seeking out. I mean, sort of. And I would say my doula training, it's a profound, it's incredible. It's 17 weeks long. It's life changing. Um, I fell in love with my business like way faster than I fell in love with my baby, which makes sense because children are stressful and I wasn't like loved and nurtured in this little nest to have this really positive mom experience. Um, so I actually learned a lot from being a doula 
to make me a better mom because I felt this pull all the time as a single parent that I was like, I love my business. It was making me money. It was really fun. It like hit me all the right, you know, it hit, it hit in all the best places. And so, um, and then I was like, oh, I have to keep doing this work of motherhood. And I'm so grateful because they kind of just kept like cycling through because my daughter is my reason for starting my business. And then my business taught me how to be a better parent. And that's why I really love this topic because um, it was a, it was a very unique and bizarre cycle. So even currently, I can't really parse apart when people are like work-life balance. Cause I'm like, my work is my, personal life and my personal life informs my work and they're both equally important to me because my why is rooted in like deep values for me yeah that's that's very powerful and it, the the essence of entrepreneurship is like you said it's it's solving problems for other people and then getting paid for it i think too often we get confused with you know i i just sell things on on ebay and i'm an entrepreneur no Bianca is an entrepreneur. Like she, she is changing the world and starting a movement and and solving problems that people have. And I love the the path that you took. I want to dive into that more, but I want to I want to address the parenting side of things first because, um, yeah, I mean a business is fun. It, it hits your dopamine right. Like you, you make money. And what do kids do? I have three little kids. We've mentioned them before. They cost, they cost a lot. <laughs> in the beginning they're, they're no fun especially in the beginning they're super cute which is probably the only reason we don't walk away from them but okay i'm being i'm being dramatic i'm sorry kids i love you first of all but in the beginning like it's hard it's not the same as starting a business there's not that excitement and joy like it's stressful so yeah. really easy for me to see how you got in that place of like loving your yeah way more Thank than you. than your daughter um and i fully respect <laughs> you for even saying that too so as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, what, like how did you, how did you then go to being a better mom and loving your daughter equally, if not more than your business, and actually being present for her? Because I think a lot of us get caught up in, in the loving of our business and we put our families aside. Yeah, I mean, so the the main pillars, the skills that you need as a doula, and if anyone's curious about being going and being a doula, you can learn these skills. So I just want to put that to the side because I had to learn. I had to learn them as I went. Um, but one of the first ones is this, you know, deep empathy and understanding. Um, and so we're taught how to take care of folks, like, and not be attached to their outcomes and be like, what kind of birth do you want? How do you want a parent? And I'm here to be your biggest cheerleader and to provide you up-to-date research and evidence-based care. And um, and so it, it hit me one day, took too long, but I was like, oh, imagine I approached my own household like this, where I could integrate these really important skills, um, this unwavering support and empathy and understanding and not rushing things and just like going with the flow. And so like, that was a really, really big one. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you cuss, but like start not giving an F-bomb um, because so much of what we do have these social pressures. It does in our business as well. So, but we have these pressures. We look at Instagram, we look at, we watch TV and we see these things, these unrealistic, whether it's parenting expectations or standards or business expectations and standards. Um, and so as doulas, we, we really want to advocate for folks' choices and respect these diverse paths again, without that judgment. But this is really liberating when you can take that skill home and stop doing things that you don't want to do as parents. Like this isn't about neglecting your responsibilities, but it's about like shedding the unnecessary burdens and focusing on what truly matters, which is really the well-being and the happiness of your family. And these exact skills happen in your business. So like if you're like, why do I have a Twitter account? I don't get any clients from it. It takes a lot of time. I don't really understand it. And it's like an onerous thing you have to do. You'd learn that and you'd see that you could get rid of it and nothing happened. Why aren't we approaching like family functions or like lessons that you don't like and your kids don't like, or, you know, book making over complicated meals or expecting a certain cleanliness level of your house or like whatever these things are that rob us of joy volunteering at the PTA like get out if you don't like it there and so um you know I, once I started just letting that go and being like why do I keep doing this well I don't want parents at pickup to judge me and being like I'm already the single parent dyke like who does a weird job <laughs> like I think they're if they're gonna judge me they're judging me already so <laughs> 
I, who cares? I'm not coming to the PTA to make a donation instead. So, you know, that's how I'm going to make this right. But that was like so profound because the more I started having that muscle um, flexed at work, because it felt safer to be like, well, what happens if we drop Twitter um, or, I, you know, you don't get a TikTok or you don't send a newsletter. If nobody's reading your newsletter and nobody replies to it and it takes you eight hours, stop doing it. Um, and so I started learning that and then I could take that home. And that one was huge for me. Um, but generally, you know, this art of effective communication, because um, communication is the cornerstone of what doulas do. We listen actively. We communicate with compassion. Um, we, again, don't, we guide without that judgment. And there's so much judgment in the pregnancy and new parent or parenting forever. I'm like, Brandon, you probably get, everybody's got something to say about how you raise your kids and what you should do and shouldn't do. And so, you know, you can take, take that and be that kind of compassionate um, you know, actively listen to your children. And this one's hard because I know I was so tired at the end of the day. Also in 2013, I bought another company. And so I had, I was running two giant companies and single parenting with, with a neurodiverse, really complicated little human who I adore now. <laughs> She's almost finished high school, but it was, there was rough patches in there. And, um, you know, just stopping and listening. It's actually been really helpful raising her as a teen as well. Like it sh shifted that a lot. And then my final one is, is this like building resilience and adaptability. Um, as the patriarchy likes to say, I was wound pretty tight back in the day. And I, found, <laughs> I found my rigidity really stressful and parenting is really unpredictable. I mean, so is business. Um, but as doulas, we constantly have to pivot. Like, we don't know what's going to happen with a birth. Somebody might change their mind. They might not be able to feed from their body. Like, whatever these things are. And we have to have a whole bunch of contingency plans ready for our clients. And that's a golden gift to have with your kids. Like, now my daughter's called Gray. If she's like, I don't want to do this, I have next plans ready. So I'm not like, oh, my goodness, we planned this outing. And now, like, everything's terrible. Like, if somebody calls me and is like, I can't make it to the movies, I'm like, hot damn, I've already got plans. B that I like better ready. <laughs> <laughs> People canceling on me is like my favorite thing ever. It clears up oh, my calendar. That's but awesome. all of these things. They were just, they were really great to have. They were great skills as um, parents and in my business. And they just like, I could master them both. It was, it was a really nice cycle. Yeah. That's interesting. Now that we're canceled as a podcast though, because you've called out newsletters and Twitter and TikTok and all these, all these different things. Um, I fully agree with you actually. And that's, that's, what's funny about this because it's true. And I, I tend to notice the same thing in, in business and parenting. So in our, in our business architecture that we, we teach our clients and we install in their companies, we only focus on doing the important things. And it, it yeah. really messes people up because when most times when a consultant comes in, it's like, all right, we're going to do, 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 do. It's never, what are we going to strip away first? And it, it messes with people, but it's the same thing with, with parenting. And that's where I kind of got this principle from. So I'm so glad you brought this up because with kids, like they don't, they don't care what you're doing. They just want it to be meaningful. It's the same principle in business. Your business doesn't care what you're doing. As long as yeah. it's making money, you have cash flow. your employees are happy. Do those things and only do those things. Why are we doing everything else? And, and it's really the belief system that the world puts us on or puts on us and that we adapt to say like, no, my business yeah. has to look a certain way. I have to be on Twitter. I have to be in the PTA. You also called out PTA parents. So thank you. You, we have no audience left, Bianca. What are we going to do for me? What are we going to talk about? Nobody's listening. <laughs> but there's so many things. And it's like, if at this point in my business, because I'm, I want to like slow down, even though right now with the recession and stuff, it feels like there's back to a lot of work because everything, you know, vendors that I used to use, their business is closed and stuff. So I'm, I've got a lot of band-aid stuff happening while I look for new tech people and those kind of things. But I'm, if I don't love doing it, like it's got to go. Um, even if it was things that. I don't know. And I, I, I just think it's the same as crafts that you don't like doing with your kids or like we do so many things like the holiday photos. Does anybody like doing them? I mean, I love receiving them. So but like, but do you like it? Most of the time I know it was the same when growing up and everyone's fighting 
and yelling and everyone's mad. And then you have to take a photo that's supposed to capture your family. Get your Sunday back in November. Don't do it. <laughs> You have and we all know minutes. all of you were screaming three seconds before that picture was taken. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, well, that's actually funny because you have to build your role in, in, being as a business owner and entrepreneur and also all of your employees around their skill sets and what lights them up and you up. Because if, you're, if your whole company is filled with people, including yourself, doing activities that drain you, you're going to have just a company of robots who are who can't wait to quit yourself included yeah. you will subconsciously kill your business because you're doing yeah. all of the stuff that you hate very 100%. valuable principle that's yeah. amazing so okay so what i'm curious is how long were you you said you were a doula before you started your company how long oh like it grew so quickly um, so I started my doula. I, I was a pri in private practice, which um, I started in 2007. And um, it grew so fast that I needed support immediately. Like my client roster got full. Um, I, apparently I'm great at marketing. <laughs> And then, um, and this was free social media, y'all. Like you didn't have business Facebook. My first Facebook, we pretended that somebody's first name was Babo and their last name was Mia. <laughs> and that was in like 2010 because you couldn't have corporate pages. Anyway, so this was like the internet was, it was a big deal that I had a web page. No other duelist did. Anyway, so in 2007, I started my private practice. It grew really quickly. I had to hire help. I, w I started training them, which is how the training piece came because I wanted them to learn from me and and have a more comprehensive training um so i merged with um another gal natasha who i bought out in 2021 she stepped back after the pandemic and is no longer doing reproductive health and justice work um but we merged in 2009 um so it's kind of like my practice just like expanded ate some other businesses and became babel mia that's awesome. A little bit of graphic, but that's really awesome that your business ate <laughs> other businesses along the way. <laughs> so, okay. But that, I mean, that's really interesting. So it took off quickly and you've made it into a, a thriving, successful business. What I'm really curious about is like, how, how did you, how did you stumble upon this, that, that it could become a, a thriving business, helping other people make boatloads of money from what you told me before we started recording? Like, this is, it's a really cool industry that I've never heard about. And I'm just, I'm just really curious. Like how did, how have you done this whole thing? Well, a lot of people drawn to helping and healing or caring work, like you're doing it for free anyway. And so that's one of the ways I position, like most people who love helping all the time and they're probably you guys are the PTA moms. So thank you. <laughs> um, but there's they're they're the people anymore. that, <laughs> you know, they're your first phone call when like something's gone awry or they're the ones that are like, never mind, I'll organize the holiday dinner, like those folks. Um, and so I really want people to know that you can charge money to do this helping and healing work. Um, and also birth outcomes have never been the worst. Um, the U.S. has the worst mortality and morbidity rate of, of all the high GNP countries in the world. The worst. And yeah, so folks know this now. Lately. It's, it's bad. And so the combination of people, there's, out, there's people out there that really love doing helping, healing and care work. Um, and there's a really high need for it. Um, the, the match is beautiful. And so year over year, the, the um, demand for doulas just is going up exponentially. And so much so that TRICARE, which is the, um, your guys army and all of the military, um, their benefits are covering doula care, um, Medicaid is, a whole bunch of states have it covered, um, and it also is paying doulas. So doulas have the option now of working through insurance providers instead of in private practice in the way that I started. Um, so there's this really high need because the research around doula care is that we decrease all of these things that are just like off the charts, decrease C-section rates, increase the ability to feed from your body, decrease postpartum mood disorders, death, injury, like all of these things. Um, we make, sh we're, we're leveling out those stats. And so we're in a time right now where people are desperate for alternatives because they know, I mean, I had a client who said she prepped for birth, like she was prepping for war because she was black and given birth in a state that has black women die at 20 times the rate of white women, which I know is, is just like staggering. And so 
most times when people, especially um, stay-at-home parents, when they're trying to build these careers, they're very limited of what you can do. And a lot of it's MLM, which is usually a really expensive investment. And it can a lot of times just be really exploitive as a model. And so, or they do things like babysitting or house cleaning and the rates are, you know, maybe minimum wage as an average, because there's lots of people who pay much lower than minimum wage. And then you might get a good gig where somebody's prepared to pay $20 an hour or something like that, depending on your state or province. Um, so like there's limited careers available. And as a doula, the average doula package I mean, if we count rural, it can come down to about fifteen hundred. But on average, it's two to three thousand dollars a a client, and you get to be home. So, like, your marketing is done at home with your kids and your community building and your networking and that kind of stuff. But you do your prenatal appointments, which is two two like two what two two hour sessions per client in your in your months leading up to it, and then you're gone for the birth. So when I was working full, full time, sometimes I'd even have as many as six clients a month at births. Um, but I'm only out of the house for five or six shifts where you've left. Um, and so the rest of the time you can be home with your kids. And so building a model that kind of meets all of those pain points for a lot of women and parents and queer folks, um, it's, it's profound. And we also have lots of doulas who are not parents and there's lots of benefits to that. So if you're listening and you're like, I've always wanted to be a doula, but I'm not a parent, push through it. And it's not the barrier you think it is. It's actually really great because you're available all the time to help your clients. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a really, really beautiful niche that, um, it's changing the world. And I love seeing our alumni that get out of, you know, debt, who buy homes, who are able to send their kids to camp, who can save, who have a retirement fund. Um, and because we have a scholarship fund for no and low income folks to ensure that we remove all barriers for access, a lot of times people are coming in like well behind their financial dream situation. So they're coming in as, you know, very have nots and by the end of it have thriving businesses. It's really, really amazing. That's so cool. I, it's amazing that you can, you can take somebody with no experience and, and if the idea comes to them, whether it's through this podcast or, or just like you and, and help them build a thriving business out of that and teach them the right way to do it along the way. I, I, I love what you're doing and it's, it's so important. I don't know if this is technically a, a trade business, but those are the people that are like winning and making a difference in the world. Um, and I, I would put it this in that category because it's a skill yeah, you can learn and then go give trade. back to other people. That's yeah. fantastic. So this is this has been an amazing episode. I, I, I was nervous coming in because I was just I was like, I've never heard of this. This is what, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, but I love the path that you took. I, I loved hearing about how you grew your business and how you got into it, too. It's an amazing origin story. Yes, very sad. And, and that's that's terrible, but really cool what you turned it into. So. Thank you for coming. You have, I put the link on the screen to your website. You made a special page for our it Harmonious is. at Lunch listeners. I'm flattered. Uh, <laughs> we have our biggest fan here on the show too, apparently, which is amazing. <laughs> but tell us what, you, what we're going to find on that page and then uh, we'll wrap this episode up. Yeah. So if you have this little stirring that maybe you want to do birth work or you're interested in finding out how you can work in the field of reproductive health and justice, which includes preconception all the way to the postpartum period. So supporting those babies and bellies and parents. Um, on that web page, you will be able to find a quiz. So we always love a quiz. So you can see if um, doula work would be the right fit for you. We have a free workshop that's on there that you can jump in, register for, uh, as well as a link to our main course, which is our doula training, which we have spots available still in that one. And it's a 15% off code. So everything on our site is 15% off for your listeners with the code LUNCH15. That's because our listeners are the best listeners. We love you, Kiwis, and we love you from wherever country you're from, but especially you from New Zealand. Bianca, thank you so much for being here. This was an amazing episode. Thank you so much for having me. For the listeners, wherever you are, watching, listening, whatever platform you're on, make sure you subscribe so you get your daily dose of this ridiculous show. And we hopefully at least teach you how to build a business, disrupt the way you think about something or inspire you to go chase your dreams in business. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.